Hello class, welcome. Uh, we're going to do one more video in the inventory chapter, chapter 9. Um, I didn't really talk about this very much and I'm not sure why I skipped it, but anyway, um, you need to know it for exam 4. It won't be on exam 3, obviously. So anyway, so additional valuation issues is the topic for inventory in, in chapter 9. So inventory is usually valued at cost unless the value goes below the cost of the inventory. Now, our general rule is the lower of cost or net realizable value, LCNRV, right, that method. Now, that's the gap method. That's a newer gap method. The old method uh, is the second one, the lower of cost or market. This is also the IFRS method. So this is our general rule, and it's easier than doing lower of cost or market. Now, lower of cost or market, there's kind of a hardship if you have LIFO inventory or a retail method of inventory. So uh, this is only for GAP and only if you have LIFO inventory. So the general rule is lower of cost or net realizable value. Now, what is net realizable value? Well, it's the selling price less any cost of disposal. Now, the book uh, makes a point to say, it needs to be reasonably reasonably predictable, uh, cost to complete, cost to dispose, cost to transport, whatever. So let's just start working some problems here. I don't know how many I can get done, but we'll work on several. So this is exercise 9.1. Uh, it was a homework problem. You may have saw it and said, okay, I can do this quickly or whatever. It's not that big a deal, but let's let's look at this and see what's what's going on. We're given this. We have part numbers. We have quantity, so this is the number of units. Here is our original cost, and here is our net realizable value that we've calculated. So this is selling less the cost of disposal already given to us. So let's calculate our total cost. Our total cost is 600 times the 95. So that is gonna be 57,000, and we're gonna copy it all the way down, whoops. We'll copy it all the way down. And so this is our total. And our total is 370,600. So our total cost on the balance sheet for inventory is 370,600. Let's do total net realizable value. So 600 units times the total net realizable value. We could sell this and make $100 each. So that is our net realizable value. All the way down and then we'll total it up so it's 467,300 total net realizable value to do all that correctly this should be I've got some wrong numbers I've got 180,000 looks like so that should be yeah that's correct 341,300 so these are our totals we're happy with these totals now, if we determine the inventory by applying the method to the total amount of inventory, then we're going to say, hey, the answer right here on item B is 341000 All right, so that is the lower of the cost or net realizable value. Okay, so that's correct. But we could do it individually. Now, uh, if we do it individually, this is a more conservative way of doing it more conservative. So what happens is we're going to look at each one. We're going to say, are we going to take the 57 or the 60? Well, we're going to take the 57. Are we going to take the 60 or the 52? The 52. We're going to take the 38. We're going to take the 34. 82,000, the lower of. Now, something's going on with uh, 121, and it said something like, hey, um, it's obsolete, and it's just, this is the scrap value. So if that, that's one of the things that happens while we, we need to use a lower of cost or net realizable value because it's only on our books at, um, should be only on our books at 1600 what we can scrap it for, right? And then the last one is 70,500. If we total that up, we total that up, that equals 335,100. So the answer 
is 335 100. If you do it line by line, you're going to get a, a smaller number. So 335,100. You don't have to do it line by line, uh, each individual item. You could do it overall, so 341,300. Remember, this is, we're trying to be more conservative. We don't want to show 370. If we think we can only collect 341, then this would be overvalued. And so if we want to do it line by line, we think it's, hey, really 335,100. All right, let's do the next one, uh, which happens to be exercise 9-2. So this is the information that it gave us. And so it's saying, hey, calculate the unit value using lower of cost or net realizable value for each item in the inventory. All right, so first of all, let's calculate the net realizable value. So for this problem, let's calculate net realizable value. So let's see what we know. We have sales price, we have cost, we have cost to complete, and we have a selling cost. So let me move this over here. So what is our net realizable value? If we did these items, what is for column D, what is our net realizable value? Well, our net realizable value is going to be our selling price minus any cost to complete minus cost to complete minus our selling cost right any selling cost cost to complete so that looks like it's going to be eighty dollars is our net realizable value so we're going to do the same thing all the way across so 110 minus 30 minus 18 gives us 62 and we'll go all the way across we're going to you know this is a great problem to use for Excel um, because it calculates it, once we figured out how to do it, it calculates it all the way across. Now, our cost, our cost is given, our cost is given at $75. And we can just go across, we can figure this out. So what is the lower of cost or net realizable value? Well, we can easily uh, do this we can say this is 75 right we just look at each individual one we could actually do an if statement if we wanted to or a min uh, the lower of we can do a min the minimum of those two 62 60 35 50 is lower and uh, 36 is lower so that should be our answer. So the answer is lower of cost or net realizable value is 75, 62, 60, 35, 50, and 36. Now, if you look at the solutions manual, then it has it, um, instead of horizontal, it has it vertical. Let me show you how to do that, just a little Excel tip. We're gonna copy and paste, paste special, now what we need is we need to paste the values. Uh, we can do values and number formats, right? We want to keep the dollars. And we want to transpose. So it converts it. I lost a, a little bit of um, bold, I guess. But here's the answer, and this is the format that it has in the uh, solutions manual if you want to do it that way. Now, this one has no formulas in it, right? No formulas, it's just the raw numbers. All right, so that's how you do uh, that type of problem. Okay, let's do one more problem, and this is exercise 9-7, and this is going to show the lower of cost or market. So we have a company that follows the lower of cost or market. Now, remember the normal... Uh, standard is lower of cost, uh, lower of cost or net realizable value, but this is a lower cost or market method. Um, if they have a retail inventory method, uh, LIFO, LIFO retail, or whatever. So we want to do lower of cost or market on an individual item basis. Now here's what makes it complex. We're going to take the replacement cost and then have a ceiling and a floor. So 
the ceiling is going to be net realizable value. It can't go above that. The floor is going to be net realizable value minus a normal profit. So let's see what we have up here. We've got the item, the quantity, the cost per unit. So this is our original cost, and this is our replacement cost. This is our estimated selling price, our estimated uh, cost of disposal, and then the normal profit. So we're going to start with replacement cost, and I just copied this down from this column. How do we calculate net realizable value? Well, it's going to be our selling price minus the cost of disposal, and they may have said something else on that original problem. You can go back and look at uh, 9.7. So the net realizable value is $4.15. And then all the way down, we've got three dollars four uh, sixty all the way down to five fifty. So this is cost minus the disposal cost, uh, the selling price rather, minus the disposal cost. So that's the ceiling. Can't go above four fifteen. The floor is it is net realizable value minus a normal profit margin. So this is going to be the four fifteen minus the dollar twenty five. So this is 290 all the way down. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to designate a market value. We've got to pick between replacement net realizable value and uh, net realizable value less a normal profit. Now we have a ceiling and floor. What's going to happen is we're always going to pick the, the middle number. If the 3 were less than 290, we'd pick the 290. Because the 3 is in between, we're going to pick the 3. It can't go above 415. So if it were 5, then we would pick 415. So really, you need to set this up and just pick the middle number. So this is going to be the 3. That's the middle number. That's our, going to be our designated market value. The 253 or 230, we're going to take the middle one, 230. Uh, no, middle one, yes. So you got to take the 250, right? Can't go below uh, the 250. So we got 360, 460, and 370. We're going to pick the 370. So 370 um, is the answer. The next one is it can't go above the 295. So 295, that's the middle number. We've got 185 and 245. Two is right in between, so we're going to pick the two. We've got 290. 270, so you got to pick the 290 because it's in the middle. Can't go below the uh, the floor. The 125, the 160, and the 175, we're going to pick the 160. And then the middle one here is the 520. Okay, so that's the designated market value. We've got $3, 250, 370, 295, $2, 290, $1.60, and 520. So you're picking the middle number all the way on these three. You got three choices and you're picking the middle number. Now what's the final inventory value? You want to take the three times the one, 1200. Now one thing we need to check is is the cost per unit higher or lower? If this is the lower of the cost per unit versus the designated market value. So now on this one let me highlight these two. We're going to highlight these. I'm going to use a different little color here. We're going to compare, once we've got the designated market value, we're going to compare the cost and the designated market value. We'll take the lower of those. We'll take the lower of the 250 versus the 270. And I think it works all the way. 370 is lower, 295 is lower, 2, 290. I think it works all the way down until we get to the very last one. And you got to be paying attention because what happens on the very last one the 470 is less than the 520, so you need to take the 470 times the 1000. So that's 4700. We're going to make all these dollar amounts. Let's see if we got the right answer. So the right answer is 24,110. So that is the lower of cost or market. Now, this used to be the standard for many years. And we would um, do the replacement cost and make sure it's not higher than the ceiling, not lower than the floor. And it was more complicated, so they, the FASB simplified it, made it more like the IFRS uh, when we did just lower of cost or net realizable value. 
But this is the method that you would use if you had to with, with LIFO. All right, so now you see how to do lower of cost or net realizable value or lower of cost or market. So what would happen is this would be a little bit of a loss. You could either count as a loss, goes through cost of goods sold, or just have a loss that's independent, or you could do an allowance um, account that reduces the balance of account, um, like account receivable, reduces the balance of inventory. All right, thanks for watching and good luck. Uh, this is on exam four, the final exam.